So I'll get straight into it. I have just 30 minutes. And Karate is an open source project that's, uh, you can consider this as a backdoor open source project because I work out of backdoor office. It may not be obvious from here. As you can see, I work for Intuit and I've been there for five years. And this is a project that I started on the site around two years back. And as I hopefully demonstrate, it's taken on a life of its own. It's uh, reasonably popular and I in fact met a couple of happy Karate users right now. So uh, that's amazing to see. What I hope to do in this session is talk about how Karate can be used for API testing. Uh, I'm, I'm sure all of you know what APIs are and I'm sure everyone uses APIs and we in Intuit use a lot of APIs and we have this need to test them, which is where Karate came from. I hope to do demos, so I'm going to be a little brave. Um, and Hello. And I think the big takeaway for you is that Karate is three in one. It's not only a functional testing tool, and uh, you may have used functional testing tools already while you're using them, uh, but it can also act as a mock server for APIs, right? And a very new capability which I personally found very exciting, uh, and I know a lot of uh, people out there uh, are finding exciting as well as the ability to do performance testing. So watch out for this in case you haven't seen this because you can reuse your functional tests as performance tests, which actually not many other tools can do. This is Mike. Hello, sir. That's better, thanks. I'm not sure that I have time for QA, but I will try. Depends on how we progress. This is a marketing slide. I won't spend too much time on it, but uh, obviously, you expect from any good framework. It should be easy, fast. Uh, one thing that really strikes people who use Karate is the maintainability. It's very readable. And as I will again try to prove, if you write tests using some competing framework or if you use Java or some programming language, uh, you can, there will be more lines of code. And I'll try to explain that in a moment. Little bit of background. Open source, as I said, you know, I'm the primary contributor. This is one and a half years old as of now. Um, it's a domain specific language and we will deep dive into it in a moment. And it's based on Cucumber. How many of you have kind of used Cucumber? Okay, you are aware of it. Um, in fact, at this point, how many of you have the need to do API testing right now? Just trying to get a pulse. Okay. And uh, what are the tools that you're using? Is it rest assured? How many hands? Oh, okay. Postman. So that most of you have used Are you using Postman for automation of your test cases as well? Like using that new man and all that? Probably not, right? Okay. So this is where actually Karate comes in and it kind of competes with Postman. And it's, in my opinion, easier and better. But you, know, you can be the judge of that. We are close to 1,000 GitHub stars, which I think is a very proud thing. Uh, again, for a project that only did not exist you know, more than one and a half years back. Uh, you can see already a lot of people have come forward as contributors. So your takeaway is that this is showing every sign of being uh, a reputed, you know, popular, healthy open source project. And you know, again, please do contribute if you can. At least use it. Uh, I would love for you to go back to your organizations and your friends and really, you know, spread the word. Uh, because hopefully, as you would see, Karate is uh, pretty compelling. And one data point before I get into the code and all that, again, you know, why should you care about Karate? This was almost six months after Karate was released. Uh, it was actually rated by one of the prominent test evangelists that, you know, it's up there with the grades. Uh, you can see all the usual suspects of, you know, web automation there. And, uh, you know, which was a pretty special moment for Karate. Okay, so we are getting into code. And this is a hello world example of Karate. So for those who haven't seen Karate, I think the first thing that should strike you, it doesn't look like any programming language that we are using. This is not Java, and that to me is actually one of the selling points of Karate. 
and those who know, uh, for those who have used cucumber or are aware of, you know, BDD, you know, there's this testing theory where you start your scenarios with giving, when, then, right, you have the three phases of testing. You set up something, you do something, and then, very important, you need to assert what has happened is what you're expecting. JSON, okay, so again to repeat, Karate is a framework for testing web services. All of us have heard of REST. Karate can test XML also, we can talk about that. But when you have a lot of JSON, and most companies, I'm sure all of you are just dealing with lots of JSON nowadays. The beautiful thing about Karate, when you compare it with how you, how would you do this in Java, you would have to put double quotes, escape all the other double quotes, put quotes around all the keys. It's really, really ugly. You will see examples of that. You can see Karate's design decision to kind of base itself on Cucumber's format, file structure, is amazing because you just work with, it's not just JSON, this is J lenient JSON, that's what I call it, right? This is JSON, the way that JavaScript programmers write JSON. No double quotes needed. No quotes around the keys. It's very clean and it's very readable. I keep saying that Karate is a DSL, it's a domain specific language. And you can see, here's the thing, look at the second word on each line. Right? URL, request, method, status, response, path. It should immediately make sense to anyone who's working with REST. Totally makes sense and that is what I like about Karate. It's you know, self-descriptive and very crisp. Another thing I like about this file is that there's no character which is extra, which is unnecessary. Everything makes sense, everything has a reason. And I keep repeating this. One of the biggest drawbacks of most of the testing tools that I have seen out there is the capability to do assertions. This is the most important thing you need to do as someone who's testing something. You need to validate data. This line is very special for two reasons. Again, this is pure JSON. You can uh, validate the entire data in one line. And this is a hello world, I know, but here's your takeaway. Even if you have this very horribly complicated JSON with a lot of nested elements, it's going to work. Karate built to a deep equals. And you see the not null. This is one of the biggest pain points for anyone testing web services. There is a lot of dynamic data that comes back. UUIDs, timestamps, random numbers. You can ignore only those things and test everything else. And that is one of the superpowers of Karate actually. A lot of people love this. Last but not the least, you never test one API in isolation. You will be always making a sequence of requests. Most typically, your first request is going to be authentication, right? You will sign in somewhere, get some token, and use that token for all your next requests. And you can see this, even though it's a simple example, it's already calling two web services, right? It's making a request, a post on the third line, and at the end, it's doing a get. And when it's doing a get, it's using data that came from the previous response into the next request. You need to do this all the time if you're testing APIs. And tools that help you do that are needed. So, <laughs> how many of you don't like Java in this audience? Okay, yes, there's a few. You guys are gonna love this right? So, what you see here is JSON, right? JSON is great. One of the things as a Java programmer that you envy about JavaScript programmers is that they just put one curly brace and they are working in pure data. Whereas, <laughs> this is what Java programmers are used to. This is a POJO or a class. All those getters and setters, you really need that much code in order to express that data which is so beautiful in JSON. And it gets worse. You're not there yet. You need to instantiate, <coughs> you need to instantiate the class and then you know, populate the data and then only would you reach where you're trying to reach. This line is actually valid Karate script. And it's actually doing something pretty complex, if you ask me, right? It's testing whether the 
kitten's array contains a particular complex object, not a primitive. If you had to do this in Java, you would have to do some null checks, some code like this, and this is actually a very quick and dirty example. If you are writing an enterprise version of this method, you would have to accept the generic cat uh, parameters and all that. And you can see, I'm pretty sure I've made some mistake in this code. Uh, and, I, and you know, right? And this, honestly, is what a lot of people do today for testing web services. Uh, karate came out of the pain I experienced seeing people do this using REST pressure and the competition to Karate. So, you know, hopefully that makes sense. Some smart Java programmers come, you know, they get very upset when I show them this slide. And they say, you know what, if I implement equals and hash code, I'll be there. But then I show them this. And this is something else that Karate can do. It's actually checking, not only are you trying to find one kitten, but you're trying to find any kitten whose ID is greater than 25. That is a mathematical expression that Karate supports. I'll talk more about that. And when I show people this, they kind of, you know, I don't get very convincing answers at this point. So we already noticed that Karate has some special capabilities. It's not, it takes JSON and kind of extends it to do these macros or you know, fuzzy matching is what I call it. Uh, you can see it already handles a few types. And I'll show you some examples. You know, you can check whether an array contains particular elements. You can check for data types like number or boolean, string and all that. Regex, one of my favorites, and you can imagine this is really, really powerful when you have very complex data coming back. And this is a twist, you know, that's a JavaScript function. And in the next slide, you're actually reusing a JavaScript function as part of fuzzy match. This is really powerful because you can actually define all your JavaScript functions upfront and then reuse them all across your tests. Uh, and it's pretty powerful. And Keep that in mind. You've already seen that one of Karate is, I think, the, the thing that really makes Karate special uh, compared to the other solutions out there, the way that it embeds a JavaScript engine. And that uh, is something you should really think about. It's pretty cool. For those of you who may be unfortunate enough to be still dealing with XML, again, Karate is one of the few tools that actually supports XML almost at the same level as JSON, right? So XPath, expressions are no problem. Uh, one thing that surprised me personally after I created Karate was uh, a lot of people using Karate out there are using it for SOAP testing. So clearly there is a gap in the industry for a free uh, alternative to maybe SOAP UI for testing SOAP and there are a lot of people very happy with it. I won't spend too much time on this slide but again the takeaway for you and something that I keep saying Karate is really, really good at assertions on complex JSON. <laughs> it has a whole lot of you know, special constructs uh, to assert whether an array contains this, whether an array contains partial JSON. So instead of going through all of this, I'll just show you one example. And you know, the documentation of Karate is pretty top notch. Uh, you should be able to figure this out. But let's say you have a JSON that is an array of two objects. You only worry about this key value pair. You don't want to worry about all the other bloat that you may have on the JSON. The last line allows you to say that array, I want to find any object that has only this key value pair in it. And it just works. Seriously, if you had to do this in Java, it's going to take you at least 20 lines of code. So it's something that you, know, you should really think about. When people see a new framework like Karate, they get a little worried because yet another framework, I know, look, it will work for Hello World use cases, but you know, when you really hit some complex problem, it's not failed and you'll be stuck. Here's the thing, because of the way that Karate embeds the JavaScript engine, it actually allows you to pull any Java code from either the JDK or a class that you wrote, and then start invoking methods and constructors and whatnot on that class. And this is the amazing part. If read rows, in this case, returns a hash map on the Java side, when it comes back into Karate, it becomes a JSON. 
that's really powerful because what it means is that once you have JSON, Karate is one of the best engines on the planet that can assert against JSON. And it's pretty powerful. So, yes, you have pretty reports. If you want wants pretty reports. And I think I can start trying to do a demo. Hello. This is IntelliJ, so you will notice we have syntax coloring. That's a good thing, right? Uh, it's, although Karate is an alien format that is not a programming language, because we have based on Cucumber. Cucumber has pretty good support in many tools. And you can even right click and run a test. And you get that same experience like green bar, unit testing, reports, and all that. But let me do one thing. Let me show you the parallel test. <laughs> parallel testing is really, really important for APIs. API testing takes much more time than unit tests. We all know that. We call some remote API and we wait for the response to come back. Typically, your test suites, if you're doing a lot of API testing, would be taking minutes. Karate is probably one of the few tools that allows you to start multiple threads and run all your tests. It's built into the framework. You don't need to fool around with Maven or Jenkins or any other tool. It's all built in and people love it. And I'll just quickly show you the report. Okay. And one of the great things about Karate is, is that you can see the HTTP requests in line with the report. This is beautiful. Now, reports are not very useful when everything is green. So let me demo a report failing. So I'm going to introduce a typo in the validation. Rerunning the test. And if I go and refresh the report, yeah, you saw, by the way, you know, the log is pretty descriptive. It tells you, hey, this is a spelling mistake and all that. If I, oops, yeah, it's refreshed. There's one test that failed. And you can see which test failed very quickly, zoom in, and you immediately see what failed, all the reasons. You can even look at the HTTP request that was sent before this. It's all there. Again, I repeat, not many tools actually allow you this level of flexibility where you see such a good report along with the HTTP payloads. And it works even when you run it in parallel. Okay. So, so far we've seen Karate's functional testing capabilities. You can call a service, you can get something back, you can do some pretty good assertions against what you get back. And one of my, one of the things I love about the Java ecosystem is that thing in the middle, it's called NASCON. Uh, some of you may know this is a JavaScript engine that is embedded in the JDK since Java version 8 onwards. It's an amazing piece of technology. That is what runs the JavaScript, you know, interpreting capabilities of Karate and the seamless interop between Java and JavaScript. Uh, you know, so I just love it. it. Without that, Karate wouldn't exist, to be honest. Now, I'm going to talk about two things that are surprises. You know, to me, myself, when I started Karate, I thought I would end here. You know, it's just going to do functional testing. Great, a lot of people use it. But then, uh, Karate has an ability to mock an API server. I'm going to show you that in a minute. And the last thing which is very, very new, and really this is something you should be telling people about. Uh, there is no other open source tool that does this. And I repeat, if you are a QE person, you're really, you really, know, if you haven't heard of this before, this should be pretty compelling. It's something I have been personally wanting in the industry for many years. And it is this. I have an existing functional test case. I want to reuse really that same test case as a performance test. 
and Karate actually takes a design decision to just leverage Gatling for that. And most of you have heard of Gatling, I'm sure, in the Java world it's, a, it's written in Scala, it runs on the JVM. It's a very, very good tool for performance testing. The reports are pretty awesome as well, I'll show you that. So before that, I'll show you what this mocking is all about. Some of you have used wire mock, I'm sure, if you're in the Java space. And I've already given you an idea that Karate has this amazing ability to express JSON in a clean, clean way. And not just express JSON, you have this, if you see that UUID call there, you can inject some dynamic nature into JSON in a very, very powerful way. And it just works, right? Again, because of the lack of time, you know, this demo is explained in detail in a blog post that you can find from the uh, you know, Karate documentation. The last two lines are using state, which has been set up, you know, that def cats is a variable that takes a JSON. It's an empty JSON to start with. As and when post requests are coming in, that JSON is updated. And at the end, when you make another call to this mock, you will see the state of anything that has happened prior. Right? This is very difficult to do. And here's the other shocking thing, you know, which I will dare to say here. What you're looking at is actually almost like a replacement for Tomcat, for you know, Node.js and Express and all that. And I know it's a very strong statement to make. There are some shortcuts taken. You know, we don't care about security. We don't care about maybe performance to that extent. But if you want to create a Hello World service and reuse some complicated JSON in a few minutes, this is going to work really well for your use case. Okay? Uh, mocking is important because in many times, all the QE people will identify this. You don't have control over somebody's test environment. That service is not available. It is flaky. That's when you use this mock. You stand up the mock in your local dev environment, test all your integration against it. And you know, there's a lot more I can talk about this, but in the interest of time, I'm going to stop here. Do a quick demo so you can see what the mock looks like. And let's see how that works. Five minutes. So I have a directory here. And there's a mock dot feature that I'm going to run. Before this, let me stop one of these stitched servers I had started for a demo because that's running on port 8080. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm invoking a karate.jar and that is a single binary, it's 20 MB that has entire karate bundled into it. So if you are part of a team that doesn't want to touch Java, you can use this way of using karate. All right, that's the world's fastest startup of an HTTP server. <laughs> and if I open a new, let me do one thing. Let me uh, open this HTML file. I'm creating something. You can see it's actually making requests. And if I open a new tab to look at a get request to the server, you're seeing all the JSON come back. It's uh, just working. I just want to show you one more thing before I go to Gatlin, which is the Karate UI. So, you can actually run a test from this interface. But I'm going to show you something very, very cool if you are, again, someone who's testing web services. Uh, let me reset and introduce a typo here. OK. What I'm going to do is something you cannot do even in Java when you debug, which is I'm going to fix the test case. And I'm going to rerun that step. I'm actually going to go one step back and replay it. And all the state is maintained. 
and it's green, right? And then I can go to the end and continue my test. This is super huge because if you're testing web services, one of the biggest things you keep doing is that you would be working on the last part of your test case and then you're fixing it and you will rerun everything from the start where you will log in, sign in, and you just save time. I have five minutes. So the last thing for the demo is the Gatling demo. That's going to be quick. If you know Gatlin, you know that you have to write performance test scripts in Scala, right? And it's actually quite complex. You need to know Scala really well in order to write some, you know, reasonably good test cases. But you can see this performance test is actually reusing 100% two existing Karate test cases, right? And you can run them in parallel. You can define the number of users, concurrent load, whatnot. So this is set up, and I'm going to run this right now. Maven clean tests. It's something a Java programmer does for a lifetime. And yes, it's actually kicking off a Gatling test. You know, Gatling is a separate framework, but again, I repeat, it's one of the world's best frameworks for performance testing. And I'm going to show you the reports in a moment. And we are reusing Karate tests. I have deliberately introduced one of the errors, because remember, Karate is great at assertions. One of the test um, steps is designed to fail. Yeah, the way Gatling works is it prints the file of the URL at the end. Paste it into the browser. It's a pretty beautiful report. And because of the Karate integration, it actually tells you the line number of what failed in your Gatling test and what the error message was. Yes, if you haven't used Gatling, you should check it out. It's Pretty awesome. You get you can drill down to you know all kinds of things. You can see which was the slowest call and all that. All right. So I just did the demo, and my last slide. Again, your takeaway is that please you know do go and spread the word to your teams. All of you must be using web services in your organizations. This is a new tool, but I think as hopefully I've demonstrated, this is actually a tool that shows great promise. Uh, and again, a plug, this is a Bangalore's open source project, so you, know, you have every reason to contribute and you know, make us proud in a sense. Uh, comprehensive HTTP support, functional testing, mocks, which are very useful if you really get into advanced testing, uh, and performance testing. So with that, I think I have one minute to take questions, uh, or we can certainly meet after this. I'll be around for some time. Question. Compare it with the Postman. Compare with Postman. Very quickly, two things. Assertions, Postman is not as good, right? If you have a big JSON coming back and you want to do assertions and ignore fields, and if we have this complex arrays and contains things, very difficult to do in Postman. Number two reason, if you want to do automation of Postman tests in CI, right? If you want to run them under Jenkins, and especially do parallel testing, Karate is far better. Cool. Thank you very much.